welcome to the Gonga Chops YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications for our channel. And head over to gongachops.com to grab your free 7-day trial for access to over 200 exclusive step-by-step -step lessons. Hey guys, Marcos Torres here from gongachops.com, and I want to give you a brief rundown of your new LP bongos. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the bongo, getting you comfortable with your drum, how to tune it, and get you started playing your first groove. So first off, as with most hand drums that evolved in the colonies of North and South America, the bongo has deep African roots, specifically from the Central African regions populated by the Bantu tribes. The bongo's earliest musical roots are found in the eastern provinces of Cuba in the Changui and Song, two musical genres that feature the bongo as the sole percussive drum. The Changui traditionally employs a bongo that is larger and tuned lower in pitch than the modern bongo. Song music, on the other hand, begin to incorporate bongos that are much more similar in size to the modern bongo. So now that we have a very brief history of the origin of the bongo, let's get to it. The bongos I have here are a pair of Giovanni Galaxy series wood drums equipped with Remo Fiberskin 3 heads. So when we sit with our drums, ideally, we want to hold them horizontally between both legs with the weight mainly resting on our calf muscles using the inside of our upper leg to help secure the drum in place. Once we have the bongo in place, we want to lean it towards us a little bit so that it's almost flush with our leg when we go to place our hand on the drum. The next thing I want to talk about is how we position our feet underneath the drum to help stabilize the weight of the bongo. I like to keep my heels pretty close together because it helps me feel centered with the weight of the drum. But feel free to play around with how you position your feet to find what works best for you. Keeping the bongo in place will help us keep relatively straight posture with our back, chest, and shoulders. We want to have our chest slightly out a bit of a curve in our lower back and square our shoulders to help distribute the force and weight we'll use to play. As far as tuning is concerned, although there are instances in genres like Changui where the bongo may be tuned extremely low, generally speaking, the hembra, the larger drum, is commonly tuned somewhere between the C below middle C and the F below middle C. And the macho, the smaller drum, can be tuned between the D above middle C and the C above middle C. Of course, the intervals between the drums themselves can vary greatly from player to player and style to style. So these are just some loose guidelines to keep in mind. Ideally, what you want to do is listen to recordings of different genres, eras, and players and find a tuning that you like that complements the musical situation you're in. When we go to tune our drums, the most important thing to keep in mind is that we want to adjust the tension evenly with each lug to raise or lower the pitch of the drum. To raise the pitch, we'll turn each lug clockwise a half or quarter turn at a time as we work our way around the drum. Oftentimes, our bongos will continue to self-adjust in pitch after we're done tuning. To avoid the pitch drastically changing, feel free to play a hefty hit with your palm in the middle of the drum to help the head settle a bit. For a more comprehensive guide to tuning the bongos, make sure to check out our free in-depth tuning guide by clicking the link below. So now that we have a basic idea of how to tune, let's work on our first groove. This is a simple pattern based on the bongos infamous martillo pattern that you can use in a pop, funk, rock, or R&B setting. It'll use just a couple of the various sounds we can get out of the bongo open tones, and ghost tones. There are some players that execute the open tone with any number of fingers, generally one, two, or three. But let's focus on getting a nice resonant tone in each hand using only our index fingers. Depending on the size of your hand, you may want to bring your hand a bit closer into the center or further away. And we'll have to separate our index fingers just a bit from the rest of our fingers and create a small amount of tension, striking the drum near the edge. One, two, three, four. We can also play any of the sounds on the bongo as ghost strokes or ghost tones. The main thing we'll look for is a softer sound in terms of volume to create some variation in the dynamics we play with. So let's play four open tones followed by four ghost tones near the edge of the drum. One, two, three, four.
Now let's combine these sounds to create our first groove. We'll essentially be playing a hand-to-hand -hand martillo, which means that we'll be playing alternating our hands right to left throughout the pattern while playing all of our strokes near the edge of the drum. For this one bar groove, we're simply going to play an accented open tone, followed by three ghost tones, then another accented open tone followed by a ghost, an open tone on the hembra, and one more ghost tone. I'll be starting with my right hand as I'm a right-handed player. So if you're left-handed, feel free to start with your left. One, two, three, four. Now let's work on that one more time, up to speed, over one of our exclusive practice loops included with our congachops.com membership. One, two, three, four. So there you have it, a few simple tips and a super useful groove to get you started playing bongo. Feel free to experiment with some of the different sounds you can get and come up with some of your own grooves as you're playing along with your favorite songs. If you're interested in learning more about how to play bongo in depth and step by step, make sure to head over to congachops.com and grab your free 7 day trial to access over 50 hours of exclusive content.